We are live. Thank you for pressing the magic button, Michael. <laughs> and we are here. So hello, Land of Facebook. Welcome to our second Imperial Kitchen cooking show. We had fun the first time, so we did it again. And I think we already have plans to do it again next month. Um, tonight's beneficiary is the Hudson Pride Center, which uh, Michael will share a little bit more about later in the evening. We hope that anyone who is able can donate at icny.org slash kitchen, and we'll put that link in the comments as well so you can follow along. Um, tonight we have two, two special guests along with Nelson and myself. Um, our first very, very special guest is our very own Countess Ruby Starling, who is um, also known as Revy. She is joining us from her blinged out holiday festive kitchen. Welcome to my holiday kitchen. Hey, I feel like we need disco music. Um, oh, I would love that. I know. What are you making tonight, Ravi? I'm going to make my keto, which, um, which means it's carb friendly, zero sugar, totally guilt free banana nut cake. I mean, uh, I'm also throwing in chocolate chip because who can say no to chocolate, right? Why not? <laughs> so before we get to having those creations and talking about all those fun ingredients, we have Emperor Antonio T. Ventura, also known as Michael, also known as Baby D. Real Cracker, many, many monsters. Um, and he's going to make a fun special cocktail sort of in honor of Ruby Starling with Ruby and its name. So take it away, Michael. I didn't even think about that. When I go, really? No. It's just no, no good. Well, hey, there we go. I mean, yes, totally, totally meant to do that. What are you talking about? Totally meant to do that. Um, so we're gonna do a ruby chai apple teeny recipe, and one second. We have a coral going by. Something's happening. <laughs> well, while we're waiting for Michael, I think we all are also making cocktails alongside him. Maybe some um, some non-alcoholic versions, some alcoholic versions. Michael's making his with vodka. I made mine with whiskey because that's what I had. Um, and it turned out really well in the samples, <laughs> for sure. I'm okay. drinking my go-to, Tito's and soda. There you go, Tito's and soda. Yep. So the recipe I chose is from liquor.com because these both recipes tonight aren't our personal make, so we want to give credit to where they're from. So go to liquor.com to get this. It's a ruby chai apple teeny recipe. Um, and so you, we posted it. It's on the event page. We can get one there later. But it's one gala apple, or we have Fuji just because we have on hand, chai-infused vodka, chai-infused cider, agave, and then a garnish. So I actually have our vodka and cider pre-steeped because we made this back a couple weeks ago in Thanksgiving at Thanksgiving. And what you do just based on the recipe, you use chai tea bags and you will take your mason jar and you put the vodka in it and you add the chai tea bag and you let that steep for one to two hours, which is why it's pre-steeped because we don't have that long today to steep it. And then for the cider, you actually take six ounces of the cider, heat it up towards just hot, not boiling on the stove, take it off, put the tea bag in there for about five minutes, and there you have your steeped chai and your steeped vodka. So take your apple, as you saw Princess Royale Cutie Pie doing, and actually we're gonna switch the view real quick because we talked about this earlier. We're learning, we're learning here, here we go. <laughs> so add it to your, um, Mixer and muddle it. I don't have a real muddler, so I'm gonna turn off the sound real quick because it's gonna be a little loud. One second. In the kitchen, you gotta learn how to improvise and use the tools that you have, right? So I'm using a wooden spoon as well. Ah, that works. See, great minds think alike. What are you using, Nelson? 
I think you're on mute, Nelson. We'll get there. We'll get there. I think I'm the only one who's uh, not mute. So what? I have to talk right now. That's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Cutie pie, how come you're on mute too? You were doing well. You were. I could hear you. Anyway, my cocktail is not. Oh my God! Look what he brought. <laughs> That's actually doing the job. Jokes, keep your jokes to yourself, people. That's what we're here for. It's a holiday spirit. We have to make fun. As my boyfriend said, straight from the bedroom. Okay, I don't know what, <laughs> I'm not involved in that, so I don't know what's going on. So yes, yeah, so you muddle it and tell us about the consistency of applesauce, which mine essentially is, and then you take. For those that want to follow the recipe, I know a lot of us just kind of pour, but pour <laughs> it's one and a half ounces of the chai infused vodka. You can just omit the vodka, use chai tea if you want to make it a mocktail. I know that's what Nelson I think is doing, a mocktail version, yep. Um, so that's the one and a half ounces of that into your shaker with that. And then it is one of ounces of the spiced cider. Shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it. Shake it off. <laughs> See, this is why we love Ruby. And then just one ounce of the agave nectar. Add some ice to your shaker. And then, like I said, do the shake it, shake it. A little loud, 10 seconds, sorry. The happy sounds. Exactly, the happy sounds. That's not what we all miss right now, but we can hopefully still do it at home. This was a chilled glass, but I took it out in prep, so make sure your glass is chilled. <laughs> if I could get it. And I would pour it if I can get the top off of the shaker. <laughs> live television, folks, live television. And then you have yourself your chai apple teeny. Apparently I didn't work it enough, but it's fine. We'll do a taste of that. <laughs> and cheers. Cheers. I love that color. Mm -hmm. So tell us how it is. Spicy, it's good. And you can garnish it with a little apple if you want. Does it taste like holidays? It does. It really, like if you put a bunch of like the spices into a, your, on your stove and heat it up. Yeah. So like, that's what it tastes like for sure. So for me, as a newly introduced to Christmas, everybody knows I'm Jewish, but uh, I come from a mixed home. My husband is Christian, so we celebrate Chrismica. So for me, I'm so excited about the holidays and the, the smells and the sounds. And for the past week, I've been listening to Christmas songs. <laughs> it's hysterical, I think. <laughs> but I enjoy it. It's fun. It's festive. You know, this year was tough on so many people that, I don't know, the holidays kind of give you hope. And um, speaking of holidays, today is the first day of Hanukkah. Yay! So happy Hanukkah. It's the, it's the celebration of light. Light? And I, I, my trusty menorah right here. <laughs> it's the first night, first candle. Uh, so happy Hanukkah to everybody who's celebrating. Yes, happy yeah. Hanukkah. Yay. So, Michael, I made your cocktail with whiskey instead of vodka. How does that taste? It, it's wonderful because you figure hot apple cider is often with whiskey and it's the it infusion. It just makes it like spicy and lovely. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a very warming. That would have been a very warming version of it just on a, on a night like this past couple of days have been. Absolutely. Trying it, there you go. And I didn't put the agave in. I feel like the cider is sweet enough, so I just left it out. I don't know if anybody else is making it with us, but we have a comment from Christine that you mean chai apple saltini in honor of her name. Oh, yes. You add some maybe like salted caramel rim or something. That could be a fun spinoff. So <laughs> real quick, just so we can catch up, because I totally had the wrong button push because I was trying to make sure all the banners were on. 
We have, Christine also said disco for Ruby's background. We have Empress Bella Rose Reynolds Deluxe from Western Mass. All kinds of friends in the kitchen. Okay, a certain somebody's wife being inappropriate in the comments. <laughs> Cutie pie. <laughs> tell us, tell us, the people who can't hear, who can't see it. Uh, we have to go back and uh, check it out. It was a he, 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 he said tea bag moment. <laughs> Uh, hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Cece. <laughs> Who else we got here? Steven. I think that's copyright, right? Yeah. Um, and Trent, Trent was the inappropriate comment, which I didn't expect anything different. <laughs> um, so just a reminder before we go further, is we are benefiting the Hudson Pride Center. You see the scrolling on the bottom, which goes to icny.org backslash kitchen. Um, same link as last month, different beneficiary. And um, a little bit later, I'll go into who they are, but it's another one of our favorite beneficiaries helping the youth of our community. But now I believe it is time for Ruby Starling to let us know some keto baking. It's time for cake. Yay. So this is one of my favorite. I got this recipe for from uh, sugarfreemom.com. Uh, if you're interested in any of the keto-friendly or sugar-free recipes, her website is amazing. Uh, tons of resources. So definitely you should check it out. Um, I'm going to start because all we have to do is just mix everything. So I kind of have everything ready right here. Um, the first, first ingredient is eggs. I'm going to put 12 eggs and I'm using the jumbo eggs because um, I um, found that this is three cups. But if you're using smaller eggs, please measure because we, you need three cups full of eggs. So the jumbo eggs is just 12 eggs. To that, I'll add one cup of salted butter. One cup is just um, melted um, full packet, full, full bar of, of butter. Two thirds of a cup water, straight from the tap. No issues right there. Now here's the secret. When you're on a keto diet, you can't have bananas because they have sugars and carbs. So what we use for this recipe in order to subtract, subtract that, that is uh, banana extract. And I love bananas. I would do anything for a banana. It's just, I'm so sad I can't eat it. So I know I have to put one tablespoon plus one teaspoon, but I cheat and I put, I put two tablespoons because I love the banana flavoring and I love the banana smell. It's so good. I wish you guys were here right now because it smells like heaven. And this is the brand I use, Olive Nation. Um, right there, Olive Nation. I get it on Amazon. It's affordable, it comes in fast, and it, it's amazing. Um, the second thing I'm using, and this is, this is not, you don't really have to, but I find that it gives this like an extra layer of flavor to your uh, banana bread. It's uh, maple extract, and I do two teaspoons. Oh my God, it smells so good. <laughs> I love this. We have Nelson's actually showing your product for you, doing product placement for you as you oh, say Oh, perfect, it. yes. So this is what I'm using. Milk. Maple flavoring. Nelson, did you find it in the store? I wish we could hear you. We can't hear you. I'm gonna continue really quick until we can get Nelson on. Um, now, because this is sugar-free, in order to, to get the sweetness, 
I'm using uh, sweet drops, it's sweet leaf, and they're vanilla flavored. Test, test, test. Oh, we can hear you, yes! Hey. So did you find the maple flavoring in the store? No, I actually had to order them from Amazon. So mm -hmm. I ordered it on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, I got, I think it was Tuesday. Tuesday, I got the uh, the uh, maple, and then Wednesday, I got the banana extract. So they came in on time. Beautiful. Well, yeah. glad that you have them. So I'm going back to this. I'm going to use my vanilla sweetener, and it's um, it's half a teaspoon that on this brand, it's five pumps. Like the, the pump is not full. It's just like a the two, it's a quarter of a three, two quarters of a, uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, stevia is good. So it's five pumps because the pump is small. Oh, hold on a second. Be right back. Okay. And this is it for our wet ingredients. It's all in my trusty mixer bowl. I put it in the mixer and I use my guitar angle. I'm with you. And I stir it very slow, just so that all the ingredients can get incorporated. While this is happening on a separate mixing bowl, I'm going to mix my dry ingredients. And I'm going to start with a half cup of Swerve brown sugar. This is, that's the, yes, thank you, Nelson. That's the brand I use. Again, it's fruit sugar, so it's, it's not bad for you. It's like eating a, a piece of fruit. So one cup of pack sugar, one cup of coconut flour, yep. coconut flour, any brand. I use this type, this brand by uh, Anthony's. It's very good. I also get it on Amazon. I get everything on Amazon. I think I would be much richer if we didn't have Amazon. The, the next one, I'm going to have one cup of ground flaxseed. Um, it's just, you see, it's just like ground flaxseed. And again, I use Anthony. Anthony's. His brand is really good. I, I think his uh, ingredients are really um, high quality. Okay, and then no cake will be get, will be working out without baking powder. So we're gonna do. I gotta dry my dry my spoon. Two tablespoons of baking soda. One and two. And then, in order to get that bread consistency that we miss so much when it's uh, when we're doing keto because we can't have bread, what we use is xanthan gum. That actually gives the bread the consistency and uh, the taste of bread. It it's really tasting gluteny while it's not. So. Two tablespoons, uh, two um, teaspoons, I'm sorry, of the Sanatan gum. And then half a teaspoon of salt, just for the contrast. Now the last thing is cinnamon, my nemesis. I know. Everybody loves cinnamon. I don't know, I'm weird. What? I know, I know. But I don't mind it in this banana cake. So if you love cinnamon, feel free to put 
um, two tablespoons, two teaspoons, and enjoy it. Um, I just sparkle a little bit, just you to say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it for my dry ingredients. So now I'm gonna break the sugar. I don't know if you see, but the sugar is kind of chunky, the brown sugar. So I smush it to little chunks so that when I blend it with my wet ingredients, they mix well. And it smells fantastic, even with the cinnamon. So really? It's rain thick, not the rain. So Saltini Piper made a good point. Listening to all that Christmas music, listening to all that Christmas music, maybe we'll bring out your love for cinnamon. <laughs> I don't think so. My husband loves cinnamon. He eats it on everything. What about other spices, like nutmeg and cardamom? Like, do you like those other kinds of warm spices? Mm -mm, no. Well, no, I use, I use them in cooking, but not on... Um, Desserts. But that's because I'm nuts, you know? My mind is not right. Like, who doesn't <laughs> like cinnamon, right? The, I love cinnamon. Yeah, the only thing that I don't like more than cinnamon, and please don't hold it against me, is raisins. I think they're evil. I don't know. <laughs> Not saying anything. <laughs> no, I mean, they're grapes are so yummy and sweet. And why do you have to take everything out of them and <laughs> bring it? Anyway, now that we got the taste bud working, I'm going to put my, uh, I'm going to incorporate the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. <laughs> While that's happening, I'm going to take a sip. Cheers. Happy holidays. Cheers. <laughs> okay. So now I know my recipe, the recipe that we shared with the community and with everybody has a section that talks about chocolate and about nuts. I know I don't like cinnamon, but I can't for the life of me make a decision on which one I want to use. So I use both. <laughs> I also cheat and I use a little bit more than what the recipe calls for. So these are Lily's semi-sweet baking chips. They are sugar-free. And yummy. Actually, Lily's has a series of sugar-free goodies that nobody would know the difference. Nobody. So I have a cup of um, baking chips and I have a cup of walnuts. And I'm incorpor incorporating them into my um, blend here. <laughs> yum yum side note if you're making this you should make sure your oven is set for 375 when you start making making or mixing uh, the cake because you saw that's it I'm done now it's mixing and that's it everything that has to be done right now is put it in the oven so by now my oven would be nice and warm and ready to accept it now the quantities that I gave you today is enough for two batches two loaves why? Because one is never enough. I promise you. One is never enough. 
I can't see from here. Do you have your um, nuts or chocolate in? Yeah. yeah. You do. So it's a little yeah. watery. I would add a little bit more coconut flour. I'm Just a little bit more. more. So what I do right now, getting my angle out. This is the consistency. It's kind of chunky and it smells amazing. I wish you guys were here, but if you guys are making it in the future, please share with me your happy thoughts about this smell because it, it literally smells like holidays. Okay. Now, this batter, I divide to my pre-lined baking trays. Try to do it evenly. It's not going to be a total loss if you don't do it exactly evenly. If you want just one loaf, you can just divide the quantities to two and just make half of it. And that's, that's absolutely fine. Ah, yum, yum. So, Faltini's on her way to your house now, maybe, just so you know. <laughs> oh, please. Christine, I have, one of these is for you. If you want, it's yours. It's yours. If we're doing Stonewall on Saturday, it's yours. I made, I pre-made two of them so I can show you the finished product earlier this week. But before we talked about me joining, I made two for myself because I make them every two weeks. Um, so I gave <laughs> I gave the two loaves that I made, I gave to people at work. And it's hard to convince them that this is sugar-free. They don't believe me. And they don't believe me it's guilt-free. Well, now you can show the video and be like, yes, see, here it is. <laughs> yes, Christine, it's yours. Text me. Let me know if you're coming. Or if not, you're in the city. If you're in the city or tomorrow or whatever, let's meet. I'll give it to you. Okay. Now, because I'm crazy, I like to make these guys nice and tight. That's what we like. Nice and tight. Just waiting for the comments on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nobody commented. Even even Trin didn't comment, right? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> He's gonna text me in a minute. Yep. <laughs> okay. So this is how it should look like before you put it in the oven. And it should go to the oven right now. And I'm going to reveal it later in the program, how it looks. All right, I have one question before we get to anybody else's question. Why do you use parchment paper versus like a cooking spray or something? I see you use cooking spray as well, but because this has to go out from the pan as soon as it gets out of the oven, because then if not, it gets moist. And when I pick it up after it's after I'm baking it, Having the parchment paper is easy. I just pull everything out, and that's it. It's just easier. And it's like a whole different texture, so that probably helps it to come out versus a product made with flour. Yeah, yeah. It's just with this parchment paper, the removal from the pen is very easy. If you notice, I don't use any cooking spray, not even on the edges. If they get stuck. I just run a knife through the edge and it slides right off. Also, a very, a very good idea is that if you take the parchment paper and you cut a little bit on both ends, you can put it right into the small shell like this and then work on it so it will be nice and easy to pick up later. So it'll Show be me what you're doing. I cut it on the end. Oh, yeah. So that way it comes in like that. So it makes, it doesn't, Make any creases at the ends of the uh, of the pan or anything like that. 
I wonder if they have pre. You know how they have the round ones that go on the bottom of the cake pan. I wonder if they have for this also the pre-cut ones. I don't know. Something to search, and if it doesn't exist, hey, I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> So this is this is me for now until uh, we're ready to show you the final product. If you're making it at home, uh, not the three of you, but whoever's watching, if you're making it, text me, send me a note on Facebook. Tell me how you like it. Tell me what would you change. I would love to try on some new recipes. If you have a recipe for me that is keto and you want to share, please. I love it. I have a very I have a quick question. Uh, is it true that keto is very similar to the Atkins diet? Is this where it comes from? Is that the, uh, the idea behind it? So I think keto is just on steroids because you can't have any carbs. It's, they allow you to have very small amount of carbs. Okay. And, uh, but hey, it worked for me. It doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. It worked for me. I lost 40 pounds in the span of six months or 10 months and ever since then i yes i gained some weight while covid because my gym is closed but um i think that if i ate carbs i would be really big because i love food i love 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 food but with keto i get to eat all the fun stuff like bacon who doesn't love bacon right um so I get to eat mayo because mayo's fine. I get to eat eggs, I get to eat cheese. Um, and then also I get to eat a lot of healthy proteins like fish and chicken and meat. And I really watch what I eat. I eat the healthy things. Good, I like that. That's a good, that's a good thing. I, might, I have to try some of it because I never done it before, so. I'll see how it tastes with the banana bread now. <laughs> it's tough. I'll give you that. Letting go of pasta and pizza oh, is oh, not... God. <laughs> yeah, exa that's exactly what it was. I'm like, oh, God. Now I can't have pasta anymore. I went to Coronation a, a few, um, maybe last year. Yes, Michael was there. <laughs> it was midnight, and I didn't eat dinner. And we were busy running around Stacey and I all day, and I was so hungry. And then we walked in with two trays of pizza, and I'm like, Grr! Oh my God. I had pizza. And it was the best pizza I've ever had, even though it was probably like not really good pizza. But I was having <laughs> so much fun. Ask Michael about my face, and I was having fun. So. Fun fact, we also have the Emperor-elect of um, Washington, D.C. in the house, Maddie, on the line, who, what, where we were, we were in D.C. for <laughs> 2019. You've never seen, I think, the amount of joy, <laughs> love, inappropriateness, <laughs> Anything you put together in that realm on someone's face is what you saw on Ruby's face in that first wow. day of pizza. And it, it had been what, two years? Two years. Two years without pizza or pasta. And it was it was so worth it. The next day, I was, my body is like, you know what? That's not flying. <laughs> there you go now. I, I was feeling so bad, but it was worth it. <laughs> I would do it again in a year. Every two years. And isn't it true, staying on the keto commentary for a second, isn't it true though that like you have to be very careful and you should consult your doctor or for, for most people before you actually start just going full force keto? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a, it's a major change on your body. It's a major change. You should have your blood tested, do your annual exam, talk to your doctor about your process, you don't have to go full on. You can low. You can go low carbs. Whatever works for you, which is what I said. It's not for everybody. I felt like I needed to lose a lot of weight in a short amount of time. So for me, it worked. For my husband, it worked. Some people, it doesn't work for them. My doctor, I go every year. I do my annual exam. 
She tests my blood. She tests my my uh, my vitals. She says hey or nay. She tells me, hey, your cholesterol is too high. You gotta you gotta do something. Then I'll lower my fat fat intake. I'll eat more greens. I'll compensate. But you have to stay in touch with your doctor. Don't just make a decision and and run with it. You gotta stay healthy. Yes. Well, it's fun to have recipes for desserts on keto because I feel like that's where people struggle the most. Coming from the pastry side, when <laughs> when people would come in for catering saying they wanted something keto, that's one of those things that I was always like, oh, I got to think about that for a minute because yep. it, it, it is a challenge. So all those special ingredients are something that are a lot of fun to play with if it's something you're going for. I also made a banana bread today, but without keto <laughs> ingredients because it's not something I'm going for. Um, and saying banana bread out loud in the house meant I had to make banana bread because Trent is here too. <laughs> <laughs> so when you reveal, I will reveal mine as well, and I can share that recipe for anybody not going for the guilt-free version. If you want the <laughs> sort of a traditional easy one to use as well, I can share that for friends as well. Yeah, I'm sure people would love to see that. But I'm the same way as you. I like throwing nuts and chocolate chips. Sometimes if I make like overnight oats and I didn't get to eat one of them, I'll throw that in there. I'll uh, I throw all kinds of stuff into banana bread. It's a good use of using things up. Um, Christine commented that she's allergic to bananas and I use the same recipe with applesauce um, to make an apple bread or- I wonder you know. if she can use the, the flavoring. Does it have actual bananas in it? Hmm. Well, no, it says alcohol, water, and natural flavors. There's no actual banana in it. Well, it figures because I can't have banana. That's just flavor. Yeah, I saw that in the movie and I got very sad. <laughs> there was no banana. <laughs> I can assure you, Michael, you wouldn't know the difference. Oh, well, I'm going to make it. We get the ingredients for today, but I'm going to make it in the near future for sure. So what I had... What I do with it every night after dinner, I get a slice, hefty slice, and I put a little, I put it in the microwave for like 10 seconds. So it's the chocolate is melty and the, the, the bread is warm. And then I put a little Cool Whip on it. Mm, <laughs> yummy. You can't, you can't end your night in a better way. Just with coffee. So it's cake and coffee. That's the <laughs> night treat. <laughs> and you're you know, able to sleep after that? <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> I've been drinking coffee my entire life. I come from Israel. That's what we have in our bottles, coffee. <laughs> That's what we do. It's the same here. I come from Puerto Rico, so it's the same thing. We grow yeah. up with coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Now, I, Jen, to your comment about ingredients and when people, you know, try to bake with it, the good thing is that in the recent recent years, maybe five years or so, people are really conscious about keto. Mm -hmm. And you know how when uh, gluten-free started, all the market was flooded with all these new cool things that you can use and they're all gluten-free or all the soy, you know, someone was vegan or, or vegetarian all these alternates. Now the market is overwhelmed with alternates. You can, you can get anything you want that is low carb. I make chicken pot pie. And for for um, Thanksgiving, I made um, pumpkin pie. Oh my God, with, cru with crust and <laughs> keto. So there are alternates. There are. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned gluten-free, and I uh, I know that when it came out, it was like big, the big craze. But I think at some point, some people took advantage of it because it was for people who are, you know, who have, uh, who cannot have gluten because of the, of the immune system. And some people kind of took it, above and beyond that and they say, well, I want to go into the bandwagon of having gluten-free, even though I, you know, I don't have any problems with my system. 
and kind of went out, got out a little bit out of hand and some you know like restaurants and, and the kitchens and stuff like that because everybody wanted gluten free and this it couldn't be that all of a sudden a hundred people sat down they're all gluten free <laughs> kind of thing. Well, food is food is a choice, so people get to choose what they put in their bodies and what they don't. Yeah. So I don't think it. I don't think that's not fair to say like bandwagon or whatever. Like every, every food is a choice. We all choose right, what true. we want to put true. in our body and what we don't. That is true. <laughs> but it was interesting how everybody just wanted to do gluten free as there's well. There's always there's always a new fad or a new trend, but yeah. um, I think it makes people who cook and like to cook have fun challenges when somebody says, oh, I, I can't be whatever. It's like, okay, let me try to figure out how to make that without that right. because it, it, it's a challenge. It's fun. It's a puzzle. It is. And, and food is adventure. You know, we, we see all our friends posting, especially from the core. There's so many like good chefs. So many. Um, they post their pictures, and I'm like, okay, how can I make this keto? This look great. So I I get inspired by our community. So I love it. I I love food. I love food. It's definitely one of my uh, biggest uh, driving powers. <laughs> like a dog. Yeah, get a treat. You all know my dog. She will do anything for a treat. Me too. <laughs> Um, just a quick note, um, if anyone's clicking on the link in the comments, it looks like the click is being weird, but if you actually type in the link, icny.org backslash kitchen into your browser, physically typing it, it'll take you to the proper donation page. There seems to be a glitch for some reason. It might be what how we're streaming it. Um, but I'm going to take a quick moment to make another beneficiary real quick, and then we can... Um, I know Jen's been following the comments. Maybe we can find some fun ones for Revy too, because everyone's talking about you, Revy, in the comments. Just Ruby, just so you know. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so Hudson Pride Center is our beneficiary tonight. Net proceeds of the donations for this entire month, yeah. just tonight. So you can donate until eleven fifty nine p.m. on Thursday, December thirty first, last day, last second of the year. Um, so straight from their website is because I wasn't able to, I didn't have time to reach out. I, you know, forgot about that. Oops. Um, is that they are a 501c3 nonprofit based here in Jersey City, where I am, um, and they service Hudson County and they support, um, they are the country, oops, oops, sorry, hmm, one of the most vibrant and diverse cities in the largest lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer questioning community in New Jersey here in Jersey City, so that's who they support. And it's, they support the youth. They've established in the early 1990s to serve as an advocate and social service provider for both the LGBTQ plus community and HIV AIDS community in Hudson County. So now they include programs that the donations will help these programs, social educational groups for youth and seniors, specialized support groups, HIV prevention support groups, linkage to HIV care services with for those infected and or exposed and um, HIV treatment adherence counseling to make sure that people stay on their proper treatment and all that. Nelson's, hold on one second. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Transgender affirming counseling for accessing necessary documentation for their gender marker change, which is actually the law here in New Jersey is named and was worked on and advocated for and fought for by one of our amazing members who's now passed. Um, Princess Roy, wow, had it in my head and in a way, Bab Sipperstein, Woo. Princess Royal Bab Sipperstein, who was an amazing advocate for the transgender community um, and a member of our organization who passed away two, three years ago. And, but the work tirelessly the marketing law of the land in New Jersey. And so it's actually the Bab Sipperstein law here in New Jersey and Hudson Pride Center does so much more besides that, they, because of COVID, have actually had to go digital with all their program because they are a center that operates outside of, like within hospital or a medical building. And so when those had to close or go COVID centric, they had to relocate. And then where they relocated, had to <laughs> relocate them. So they've gone 
um, completely digital right now, but they're holding all of their counseling services still for their clients. So no one's going without the service. So any donation in the next three weeks um, will help them continue that and into 2021. Um, and so that's our beneficiary for tonight. Amazing. And anyone in the court that remembers the Josie, the prom, the Hudson Pike prom for the teens in that area, I think we, we always used to collect dresses and, and, and send some folks to go and help serve refreshments and help check people in. And that was always a fun thing to give back to the teens in that area. Exactly. I think we have a couple of questions actually in the comments. Yeah, Revy, you're getting a lot of love for your kitchen. Um, people are jealous that you have space on your counter for your KitchenAid mixer. And I think- I have space on my counter, but nowhere else. <laughs> Don't be jealous. <laughs> I think Keith and Graham want your refrigerator. <laughs> Multiple people want lights in their kitchen all the I time. Know. I'm contemplating just keeping them. They're so festive. <laughs> I can't open my cabinets, as you can see, but hey, it's beautiful. We now do the same with heels, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, yes. Backwards and with heels. Uh, Nelson, you were called the Vanna White of the show for showing all the products. <laughs> <laughs> So we do have one question from Graham. He's asking if you can toast the bread, which is something I do with my banana bread. When it's like a day old, I'll toast it and put butter on it. 100% yes. Yeah. Toast it with a little bit of butter. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to keep it. Um, so we're doing two loaves, as I said. One can be in, you can put it in the um, refrigerator. I wrap it with the parchment paper and then with tin foil and put it in the refrigerator. And then every time I want it, I slice a piece, I heat it up and I eat it. That doesn't last 10 days in my refrigerator, but technically if you eat little slices, maybe you can keep it for 10 days. The other one I put in the freezer and um, I just take it out when I, a day before I have the last piece on the other one and let it just thaw in the, refrigerator, same stick in the, uh, the parchment paper and in a tin foil. Do you ever bake it in sizes or individual sizes? In a what, I'm sorry? In a muffin tin or like in, I, when I baked mine earlier, I, I always bake a couple in like something that's oven proof so that I can just pop it in the oven to warm it up. I didn't, I have thought about it, but I didn't yet, but that's a good idea. I should do it because then I can take it to work with me. And they're individual, so you don't have to worry about slicing it when it's frozen. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic idea. Have it available, I'm all for it. <laughs> so are we ready for the reveal? Yeah. So, oh. Rolling. So I have a loaf that I pre-made. It's, that's how it looks like. And it has the nuts and the chocolate. And then I'm gonna bring one that is warm. <laughs> oh my God, it smells so good. <laughs> that looks Isn't amazing. I okay. have dessert before dinner. Cause I didn't have dinner yet, but <laughs> You can see the chocolate. Oh, uh, that, that's the best. No oozing, oozing chocolate. It's incredible. <laughs> oh my God. So good. Saltini so is pretty. It's pretty and it's yummy and it's crunchy and it's sweet. And it's comforting. <laughs> it's like a good boyfriend. <laughs> Nelson, your slice looks beautiful as well. Oh my. Uh, my mom is giving me the look of what are you eating and why am I not getting some of it? 
<laughs> I feel actually, you know, you're also a dog mom and very involved in that. I based on the ingredients without the chocolate, is it dog friendly? It is not dog friendly. It has the sugar, the extract. I wouldn't give it to the dogs at all. She ha they have their own treats. They have their own treats. That's Lilu. We love Lilu. She's bored already. I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, or Cutie Pie, let's see your non-keto version. Well, I've got I've got uh, white chocolate chips and pecans in mine, which you can kind oh. of see. Um, it's definitely a darker color, I think, because the real sugars get that caramelization going. Um, but if you used more vanilla extracts or darker things, you could get similar colors. Or not. doesn't matter what color it is. But... <laughs> It looks beautiful. <laughs> like it's got a little shine on top because I use like turbinado sugar. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Okay. Gets a little gets a little bling on top. Oh, you know what I didn't mention? I didn't mention that you have to bake it for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> details. Details. 40, 45 minutes until you get a toothpick and it's clean. Unless you hit a chocolate uh, piece and then Check another spot on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that looks so good. I'm definitely gonna be trying that. Um, I was a little wary of the look and texture just because of how many eggs it did have on the recipe, but totally not a concern any longer seeing it in action. Well, it's too low. Mm -hmm. It's too low. I mean, it's more good on keto. But yeah, I, so much. I feel like <laughs> Saltini says, don't talk to your husband about having a good boyfriend, Ravi. <laughs> well, maybe I should just not comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like we might just have to create a subsection of this event going forward. Keto in the kitchen with Ruby. Because I know you have a couple other keto ones that I want to learn how to make. Yeah. That I I'm, see. Happy. I'm happy to uh, teach anybody. You know, I, I was really, uh, I don't know what I was afraid of. Yeah, I told you. The, the one, during our, during like the lockdown, early lockdown days, we did a lot of Zooms together and you were making those hamburger buttons often. And th there were friends that were very interested in those microwavable, very quick, cheesy hamburger buns. So I think that's like such a fun, that like cloud bread thing that you do. It's beautiful. Well, the thing is that those are 90 second bread. Yeah. When did you ever make bread in 90 seconds? <laughs> and it's three ingredients. It's an egg, it's almond flour, and it's cheese. Yes. The end. It's like a fun little thing. Whether you follow keto as a diet or not, just a fun little trick to have. Yeah, yeah. And they're very good, especially if you toast them. Um, and then there is, a, there is a website that sometimes, you know, being Jewish, I really like my bagel and lox on Saturday morning, right? With my cream cheese. So uh, Thin Sling Foods have zero carb, bagels they have zero carb spread they have low carb pasta i haven't tried that before because i'm nervous but uh, their their breads are for me they work really well if i toast them i put cream cheese on it with the locks and oh it's so good on saturday morning everything is good with locks. i'm, uh, I'm teaching a class on monday night for latkes and they're gonna be like healthy-ish latkes with um, root vegetables and they're gonna be baked instead of fried, but a lox on a latka with creme fraiche or cream cheese or something is like the best thing ever. So are you making anything special for Hanukkah? Unfortunately not. No donut? No, I mean, I, can, I love latkes, but I can't have the potatoes and the root vegetables. It's tough. And then I really like them to have the potato, potatoes because it's like earthy. And I just, 
I just love it. So I'd rather just not have it. I'll have banana bread instead. I think it's good. <laughs> I just love that look that you just had. We talked about how food is all of our love earlier, but that just showed it. How you're like, I, I need the potato, and you like it, like yes, you engulfed your soul right there. Give it a hug. Because I love food. I think it's a it's it's so good, especially when you find a way to make it healthy and you feel accomplished. So for me, food is it's just therapy. Absolutely. Our reigning emperor says, oh my God, cream cheese on the bread. Yeah, baby. Yes. <laughs> emperor Graham to Cracker for everyone who doesn't know who our reigning emperor is. And our reigning empress, Madeline Keith, is on the, on the comments as well, um, <laughs> who said you looked gorgeous tonight, Ruby. Thank you. Um, so we have a couple more minutes left. If you have any quick questions, shoot them in the comments. We have a couple minutes to get through some questions. Yeah, and can we can we like officially announce what's happening next month? Because I think I think he said yes. I think so. I mean, obviously things can change in a couple of weeks, but who knows? So I think that if you join us again on January 14th, that we will have CC Mansfield, our wow. newly elected uh, treasurer of the Imperial <laughs> Court, as of this week, um, filling in for a slot that was open. Which is thank you so much for doing that. Um, CC will be making homemade pasta. So we, we got we got like a ninety percent yes today. So I, I like I, I think it's a yes. I think it's a yes. Yeah. So we're putting it on yeah. putting it on film to right exactly put it out there. It's on. <laughs> now we committed. That's it. <laughs> we have to do it now. We already. It's on the Facebook world. Yeah, it's, it's, it makes it real, right? Yes. Exactly. If it's on Facebook, it's real. Sorry, CC Ruby has spoken. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and if any of our court friends have a recipe that you want to share, if there's something that you think you do well or something you want to share with the world, just like let me, Nelson, or Michael know, and we will celebrate it up. And yeah, Christine just said that it's the day before Cece and her birthday. So it's like, it could be the pre-party. Exactly. Yes. Not the pre-party. Um, yeah, so put any questions. Like I said, we have a couple more minutes left. Um, I really can't wait to make that because it just looks good. And then how much Nelson's saying it smells good and tastes good. <laughs> um, Nelson, does it feel like it's sugar free? <laughs> I guess that's an answer. <laughs> Oh, we can't hear you anymore. Again, <laughs> eat up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just, <laughs> he's enjoying it a lot. I love it. Amazing. So thank you guys for hanging out with us. Please donate even if you have a couple of dollars at icny.org slash kitchen. I think the link in the comment wasn't working maybe correctly, but maybe on the invite page it did, or you can just type it in just like that. Oh, Ron Potter said Kalaloo. Are you gonna make Kalaloo with us and doubles? Doubles? And we're still gonna be real cooking in the kitchen? What? Trinidadian themed uh, month. So, what's a good Trinidadian cocktail? Spiced rum thing? The ones with all the things in it? Anything with alcohol. <laughs> we'll try to figure out a mocktail version too, a spiced tea or something. All right, looks like we're going to be. Yeah. This, and, you know, and Empress Sugar's birthday is at the end of January. So, we'll maybe just expand. <laughs> February, just saying. It'll be well. It'll be like Valentine's kind of. So like Trinidadian is a very like loving community. And Black History Month, Caribbean, Caribbean. Black History. So there you go. <laughs> I'll move in. I think Nelson's really enjoying that hat and the bread. Yes. Yes. <laughs> for sure. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait to come back. Maybe I'll make actual food next time. 
<laughs> no, peanut butter cream cheese cup. Yeah. Ooh, you'll need two hours for those. Oh, man. I mean, creamy. Well, if we get locked down for real, for real, we might turn these into yeah, well, three hour things because we're going to need the energy. We'll <laughs> treat, we can cook all the full meals. <laughs> yeah. After that, we'll just like hang out for the day. Everybody in their pajamas. We'll be good. It's a deal. Oh. We have some feedback. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's time anyway, so. Oh, hello, hello. There hello. we go. Hi. Hello. I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah. Month two. We'll figure it out by month three. Next month. Yes. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Ruby. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby, for joining us. Everyone, hopefully you had a good time. Please donate. Donate link will be open for um, this month's beneficiary, like you said, through the end of the month. And next month, again, we put it out there after a couple of conversations. So CC Mansfield, we're looking at you, pasta. Maybe convince our resident chefs to put up some competing sauces. I don't know. Ooh, sounds good. Because like I said, in the first month we did this last month, just so in case no one knew, both Cutie Pie and Nelson are trained chefs trained pastry chef, so I was like, who would be the perfect co-host for this event? I'm like, these two for sure. So again, I I defer to them for all those cooking things because I just amateur in the kitchen, but thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Cutie Pie. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, everyone in the comments, and thank you, everyone that's donated, and we have a happy holiday, happy new year, whatever you celebrate. Please, safety wear a mask, socially distance as much as possible. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys.